Hey, how are you? Gary from Ocean State Signal. Um, a lot of people were asking about TS2 and TS1. So I figured I'd make a couple of short videos with a TS1 cabinet and with a TS2 cabinet. So just because of how TS2 is prominent now, I didn't even have a TS1 in the shop. So we had to take the show on the road. So me and Wayne are out here at uh, Route 1 in North Attleboro. This was the closest TS1 cabinet. I couldn't even find one in the state of Rhode Island. So we came out here. So all I'm gonna do is go over the components and a lot of what I talked about in the shop just to kind of get you guys an idea. And this is a lot of what you guys have in your cities already. So this will make sense to you um, based on what I was talking. So we'll start with the components. We'll start on the top and then we'll go from there. <clears throat> so as part of the class, we've been working with an M60 controller, all right? What we have here is an M11. And this is an older TS1 controller. And the reason it's TS1 is because all I have is a port two. I don't have that, that SDLC port or the port one. That's what connects the SDLC bus. I don't have that in here. I have to use my A, B, and C connector. And then I have my D harness, which goes for my preemption. So this is an older controller. You'll see it's got the push key pad. You'll notice it only has the eight lane, the eight line display where the M60 has the 16 lines. We have eight on the top, eight on the bottom. Um, but all the menus, I'll go through a couple of them. Like if I go to the phase data, you'll notice that screen looks exactly the same. So some screens do, some screens don't. I hit the F key, same way as it doesn't. But if I go to like ped times, you'll notice that's all in one screen where we broke it out to other screens before in the M60. If I go to initialization, that screen looks exactly the same. One of the big changes is with um, programming for the detectors. Oh, wrong screen. So you'll notice in here, I just have one through eight because this is TS1. <clears throat> and I really can't manipulate this very much because there's nothing to do because of my detector, my two channel detector shelf mount units I have below. The one thing that I do want to show you is unit data. We spent a lot of time on ring structure. This is what the old ring structure looks like. The new one looks different, but it works basically the same. Phase one. Turn that. Hold on, I'm just getting a camera angle. It's just the glare. The glare, oh. So if you can see it, we're doing our best here. You have phase one, ring one, two next and then five and six are your concurrent phases. And we go to the right, phase two, ring one, three next, five and six are your concurrent phases. So it all works the same, it just looks different. So I just kind of wanted to give you an idea of what the TS1 control looks like. And then if we go to the right, you'll see we have the conflict monitor. Not an MMU, a conflict monitor. And this is a 12 channel. We have the two connectors, so that's able to do 12 load switch positions. <clears throat> and this is where he comes in. These are our channels, one through 12. This is where I refer to our channels, okay? Not phases, these are channels. You get a conflict on channel two and channel six, or channel two and channel nine. Up on top, look at the couple of failures you have. A conflict, a red fail, CVM, 24 volts, one and two, the old BND, and monitor fail if the card's out. Not a lot of options in TS1 for failure. All right, we take it down to the second shelf. <clears throat> in our D harness, we get all of our preemption inputs and outputs. So over here on the left, you'll see we had a wire in. We used to have to use 760 chassis. This is an older card. This is actually an old 262, and this is a 560 rack. Because this cabinet's back from the 96 is when this was built. And basically, there's only one card, so we just do preemption on probably the main line, northbound and southbound. We take it to the right, we have shelf mount loop detection. So here's the loop detector amplifier that I showed in the class. Here's where our delays are. This is where we input the delay for the channel. So here we have channels. So we have, we have four loop amps, and I have four directions out here. So we'll assume I got two lanes, which I do. <clears throat> for both approaches, a left lane and a right lane. 
So whenever I wanted to delay on the right lane, the right lanes are primarily all on channel two. I would use the channel two dip switches to put in my delay. So in TS1, I delay on the amplifier, not in the controller. I have to put my delays over here, all right? And then, and then we would put these tags on it to basically tell you this is Route 1 southbound through, this is Whipple Street, Phase 4, Detector 4, and we would take that information right off of the plan. <clears throat> now, here's the real big difference. Here's our back panel, or what we refer to so that ticking right there, they just got a preemption call that doesn't work. That car doesn't work. <laughs> um, our terminals and facilities. And you'll notice I have a lot more terminal blocks and a lot more wiring back here than you'll notice when I show you a TS2 cabinet. So everything that I want to do with these loads, here's my load switches. Again, here's load switches. Everything I want to do with these load switches, I have to wire back here. Over here on this, the way a back panel works in TS1, in an Eagle cabinet, <clears throat> this is our DC voltage side. And over here, these three are our AC voltage side. This is where we terminate our conflict monitor wires on the back panel. I manipulate these little jumpers <clears throat> for channel nine and load switch nine to get my, my, all my vehicle signals, my ped signals, and my overlaps. So this is where we do our monitor on this side. All these black wires, that's AC voltage. On this side, you be careful, it's AC voltage. Over here, you have DC voltage, right? These little jumpers are my DC input side of my load switch. This is my AC output side of my load switch, right? You'll see I have both types of load switches. The old style that just did input, and then these do input and the output. <clears throat> these are a lot more handy to have because we can see if the problems on the inside, on the input side or the output side. Um, our flash transfer relays, right? You got one flash relay for every two load switches, 12 load switches, six flash transfer relays. Over here is our main power and our signal bus. All 120 volts AC. <clears throat> this is where we activate our, our signal bus, which turns on our load switches so that we get signal output to the field. When we go to flash, this drops out and the other side of the coil comes on and we just have our flasher going, okay? Right now the flash is doing nothing because we have the signal bus on. I could pull this out and it wouldn't do anything. If we went to flash, it would then be dark in the field. So we always want to leave it in, but it does nothing while the signal bus is active. And then down here, it's hard to see, these are our field wire signal connections over here. So we basically go, like I say, <clears throat> it starts left to right, load switches one through 12. So here we have phase one, phase two, we're not using phase three, phase four, phase five, phase six, not using seven, phase eight, we have nothing on nine. It looks like we have a pen on 10 and on, we have two wires on load switch 12, most likely a right turn arrow overlap. So this would be an example of that four plus five overlap. When phase five left turn comes on, we get a right turn arrow out of the side street. Above that is our flash wiring. This is where we program the signal flash for each, for each phase or each load switch position. <clears throat> it's either gonna, you'll see we got three wires. We got red, black, and yellow. Right now, load switch nine, we're not using. It's in the no flash position. If I was gonna make it red flash, the black would go to the left, the red in the middle. If it was gonna be yellow, the yellow to the middle, the black to the right. So you just manipulate those three wires to get it to no flash, red flash, or yellow flash. <clears throat> if we're using unused load switches, you'll notice they have, well, these two don't because we don't have them tied. We have them tied up on the back panel. But these two, you'll notice we have a little jumper in the top left spots. Basically, that's satisfying 120 volts on the red that satisfies the monitor. Otherwise, we would go to flash. So unused load switches, we put those little jumpers on there. If I pull that out, we'll go to flash. <clears throat> it's always looking for a constant 120 on a red for unused load switch positions. So that's basically the back panel. 
that's all the wiring. If I want to change anything down here, I have to manipulate wiring or jumpers on the back panel. So it's not hard to do, but in TS2, when I show you that video, it all is done through programming in the controller. I don't have to touch anything down here. Over to the right, we have our basic power panel. Basically, this is our in, in, input voltage from the grid voltage. That's 120 volts down there. Comes into a series of breakers. You'll notice how old it is. <clears throat> we have this, this is basically our suppression, this little guy right here. That's all we have on the new ones. We have a mammoth suppressor on there because there's so much bad voltage out there. And it can protects over surges and whatnot. Behind this, we have our mercury relay. There's actually an old style mercury relay in here, which yes, has mercury in it. So basically this, when the when we pull in, this pulls in, when we go to, to go to signals, the mercury actually pulls up on this from the 120 volts and that turns on the signal bus, which turns on our signals. If that's not working, we'll never get our signal bus to come on and we'll never go to signals. This is the device that sometimes you see signals on and signals flashing. That means the mercury got stuck inside of that relay. And if you whack it with a screwdriver or bang the panel, you can get the mercury to drop out and go on about your way. Because of the mercury and what it does to the environment, we actually use a solid state relay now. The new ones are blue. They have a little green LED on them. They actually help you out because the LED is a go or no go and tells you whether it's good or bad. And then we just have our main breaker and our auxiliary breaker, which generally controls the, fir the, the uh, thermostat and the fan and the light up here. Over on the police door to the right, <clears throat> This is still pretty standard. You'll notice it has the switches. We only have a flash at normal switch and a light on off switch. I talked about this today. Here's your cord free switch. We don't have one. We didn't always put them in the older cabinets, but they come standard in every new one. And then the stop time normal, we got rid of that switch. Your GFI, we put a four gang uh, receptacle in every cabinet now. And then we have the test buttons over here. And then we always put on a the name of the intersection and a serial and a serial number for us. And then you got your filter. And then one last sign over here on the left side. Here's our detector panel. <clears throat> so these are all our loop buildings that come in from our loops that are in the field or our home run cables. So these harnesses right here have all the colored wires, and this is the other end of those harnesses. So my blue, my purple and yellow, which are pins D and E, that goes on to the loops. <clears throat> and then I have, I have a blue wire that comes off. These are our vehicle detector input calls that gets hardwired to the back panel. These red wires, these are what, this is what allows our delays. And these red wires go to the green output down here. So it knows when it's in green. When it's in green, 110 gets applied to that and tells the amplifier, don't do the delay. When there's no 110, it says apply the delay. I explained that in class. And then over here, you just have all the terminations. You have AC power, AC common, and logic common. Those are always, this is pretty standard how this panel applies. And then we have the earth ground over here. Now you'll notice in this particular cabinet, we have a whole relay bank. And my guess from our, because it has so many relays, this is how we used to do coordination. This was probably, if they got all these fuses, that means it's a 120 volt interconnect that they had. So I'm pretty sure it ran down the length of route one over here. And what we would do is all those phase omits, phase holes, phase force off would all be controlled through relay logic. We'd have the same relay logic in the next cabinet and the next cabinet. And that's how we had to do coordination back in the early 90s and the 80s because we didn't have all that functionality to do internally. And then here is the D harness, the other end of this harness. So this is where we terminate. Here is these cables right here are the harness to our 550. That's how we get our preemption inputs right there. And then this is our strobe relay. So it pops our confirmation strobe. <clears throat> and I'm not sure what this relay is being used for, but a lot of relay logic back in, in TS1. A lot of people don't understand how it works. Um, it has a purpose in our industry. We'll always use relay logic. We just try to limit how much we do now because we have 
technology and the controller to do it. So that's basically um, my TS1 class. I just wanted to show you the cabinet and what it looks like. And then I'll do a TS2 class and we can compare the two and you'll see how much nicer it is. So thanks for tuning in. If you have any other, if you have any other questions about TS1 or TS2, give me a shout, Gary Ocean State. Thanks a lot. Bye.